heard about DevOps, DecOps, MLOps? Have you heard about EmbedOps? It's time that we give embedded developers some love in that domain, right? Joe Schneider from Dojo5 was on the IoT show live at IoT Stars event recently, and uh, we wanted to publish that as its own episode. Uh, IoT Stars is supporting the IoT show, and we really thank them. IoT Stars is that one IoT networking event you will want to attend several times a year, um, where you can mingle and chat with other IoT practitioners, get to know about the latest trends, and so forth. So that's really the event to be at. Thanks, IoT Stars, again. Enjoy the episode. If you like it, subscribe to the channel, give us a like, leave a comment. We'd like to hear about you. Hey, hey, hey. This is the uh, IoT show. The camera is yeah. down there. I have Joe with me. Thanks. We are live from IoT Stars at Embedded World uh, North America. We are in Anaheim, California, sunny California. And um, yeah. Olivia, your host, thanks for joining on. Joe is with me from Dojo, uh, and Joe will tell us a lot uh, about what's going on for developers, embed ops, and all of that in 2025. Joe, so, thanks for joining today. Yeah, Sorry. Thanks so much for having me, Olivia. I'm doing yeah. great. Yeah. That's it's a good show so far. Been yes. seeing lots of people and lots of people with uh, challenges, I think. Okay. We'll talk about these challenges. Yeah. Make sure that you know, we, uh, we have an audience that is very much about IoT. And uh, we um, will definitely discuss that. There is a term on your website, yes, which is called which is embed ops. Yes, I'm curious to have your definition because I think it will define very well what Dojo does and how you guys are helping your customers. Right? Yeah, you bet. Yeah, so embed ops is a uh, com combination of uh, embedded and then DevOps. Okay, and DevOps itself is you know we're we're building on you know. Uh, combinations over and over again. But DevOps itself came out of mobile and web development yeah. probably 10, 15 years ago. And really the, this uh, idea that development and operations were getting separated and siloed, and that was causing a lot of in inefficiencies in the process. And so they recognized, well, let's put these teams together mm -hmm. and then let's bring, not only change the culture around what they're doing, but also the process and tools that they're using okay. and see if we can deliver more efficiently, higher quality um, and that really was the genesis of DevOps. Now, um, in my career, I started at John Deere for 10 years. I worked at a professional services group for a couple of years. And I worked at a VC group. Um, and in the VC group, I was kind of part of the technology core. And they uh, really were, were mostly working on mobile and web stuff. And I, that's where I really recognized, wow, mobile and web have really gone ahead of, you know, despite embedded, it goes back further than yeah. mobile or web. You know, um, they really have leapfrogged us in terms of dealing with the complexity of the software. And that's where, I, you know, it's like there's so many good lessons learned. They've already kind of blazed this trail for us. What yeah. can we adapt yeah, yeah. to the embedded world? Was it, was it because it was more diverse of a world with different programming languages, lots of middleware and frameworks? And is it, do you think yeah. that's why they I, needed I mean, to be more organized? Certainly, I think like the way that um, mobile and web exploded uh -huh. into the world was different than the curve that embedded was on, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Embedded was maybe more on a linear curve, okay. uh, you know, and it, you know, mobile and web didn't exist, and all of a sudden it was everywhere, right? Yes, true. And true. so I think that just necessitated this like you, you have to find a way to deal with all this complexity uh -huh. in the software, and you're building just lines, thousands and tens of thousands, millions of lines of code. How do you how do you deal with this? It yes. became less about you know, uh, knowing a lot of quirks about mobile, and it, it very much starts to look like a computer science problem. Right. And so that's, I think the same thing is happening in Embedded. That's ultimately why we went to Embed Ops. It's like, wow, how can we adapt a lot of these ideas from the DevOps world into Embedded? Because they aren't, they can't all be just taken wholesale exactly as is. Embedded does, is special and yeah. unique in yeah. a lot yeah. of ways. So we have to find a way to adapt it. And then we saw a lot of people like using uh, tools like, uh, like GitLab, GitHub, whatever, right? Uh, which are very uh, generic. They're Swiss Army knife, right? Yeah. And so, you, yes, you can put something together, but people are putting a lot of code mm. and effort and maintenance into these very specialized systems yeah. that we're all largely doing the same thing. And so that's where we, where we got for embed ops okay. is like, how can we adapt, build a platform that's built embedded first? Yeah. You know? And so embedded is evolving a bit faster, I feel, lately, um, especially due to AI coming in. AI yeah. and DX, right? Yeah. Which forces these devices to be more connected, more open to the interwebs, yeah. more exposed from the security perspective, but also more often in need of updates. 
over the year. Sure, yeah. So tell me a bit about the evolution of embedded development in the last few years and how yeah. embedded ops has been evolving. Well, I think there's two sides to how AI is impacting embedded. One is, of course, AI at the edge and how it gets uh, used and, and how it impacts uh, customer needs, business needs mm -hmm. on these devices. But the other side is the development side and how development changes when yep. you have AI tools, AI-assisted code generation, all of that. So I think you know, from code generation, it's very early days. Um, it is doing some amazing things. And I feel like every month goes by, a new model gets created, and suddenly it's doing even more amazing things. Yes. I think right now, if you are a company that is not using AI to generate at least some parts of the code, mm -hmm. I think you are falling behind. It doesn't mean you're behind all the way yet, yeah, but yeah, it's yeah. time to start thinking about what is your strategy? What is your focus? How are you going to integrate yeah, it? The same way at some point has been about using frameworks or middlewares yeah. that we're providing a bunch of functionalities yeah. versus recoding everything all the way down. We have a big problem in embedded. We like to invent it all from scratch. I like to understand every single line of code. Yes. And I think, especially as we've seen embedded Linux start to take over a lot of these, you know, Edge AI is forcing that because it's much more difficult or maybe more... Uh, it's another you know, domain of expertise. It is. It's yeah, no yeah. longer just plain code. There's data science involved. There's, like, exactly. there's a bunch of things that embedded developers are not that comfortable with. Well, they might have been comfortable with many things yeah. until now, right? Right. And, and, and it was in the past, maybe 20, 30 years ago, maybe I was writing 5,000 lines of code and a single engineer could understand every single line. Yes. Now it's an embedded Linux system. I, I don't think there's a person in the world that has read every single line of the embedded. This is the Linux kernel. Sure. And then you, all of these drivers, everything that you're building yeah. on top of this sure. system, you have to have some amount of trust. Yes. You have to have new techniques to test these devices yes. and to maintain them. Like you said, updates, all of this becomes like you have to, we have to raise the layer of abstraction. Yes. You know, we cannot sit down at the bare metal. And what do you think are the top challenges today, 2025, mm -hmm. when it comes to managing an embedded project at scale, what are the top challenges today? Yeah, I, I mean, I think uh, speed, time to market, is, is, is a, that hasn't changed. And I think that the challenge is that as we get better at building these more complex systems, we also have difficulty... Um, uh, the, the needs of the market are increasing. You know, yeah. the, it, now everything has to be connected on the internet. That adds a huge amount of stack, you know, um, whether you're connecting through VLE or Wi-Fi mm -hmm. or whatever, yeah, yeah. right? You have to, all of a sudden, there's a bunch more code that you have to maybe not even understand and pull in. Yes. I think, yes. so, so that time market is a really big thing. I think code quality is going to be a big thing coming up, mm -hmm. whether it's just the normal bugs that we add every yeah. day, uh, but now I have to build a million lines of code instead of... Yeah. Thousand, and, or if it's and lots are generated by AI. Yeah, exactly, and so, as, as you start, and guess what? If you if you think your employees are not generating code with AI, they are. Yes. You know, but you have to be more careful when you do embedded because you have limited resources. So yeah. your code has to be less busy, less bloated. Yeah. So that's certainly one of the main reasons why embedded developers had a good control over their code because, like, every single line counted. Every yeah. single allocation of it was memory a count level optimization yeah. problem, right? Yeah. Yeah. And now I think we're seeing that, like, you know, processing power is becoming cheaper and easier yeah. and more ubiquitous. Now, you know, AI is pushing that again. But for a lot of, uh, you know, common embedded cases five, 10, 20 years ago, you could do it for a lot less battery, mm -hmm. a lot less power. Uh, and you can get, there's, a, there's so much compute in a 50 cent chip, you know? Yeah. It's, it's so wild. So it's not as important to optimize out every yes. single little yes. piece of it, right? So in a nutshell, Couple yeah. more minutes. Yeah. How does Dojo? How do you approach a project with a customer? How do you help them? Yeah, yeah. I think you know one big thing. So we have modernembedded.com. Uh, this is a, a site where we've thought about uh, ten yeah. pillars of modern embedded. These are things that I think we all know as embedded engineers that we want to do better at. Um, but oftentimes they are sacrificed for you know speed or cost or I just don't like we're under resourced. We're not the staff. Yeah. So we look at uh, all of our engagements through that kind of lens model. Like, how are we, how, how is this client doing? We, we start with assessments yeah. um, for them and say, like, in this in this uh, pillar, you're doing okay. In this pillar, we have some work to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, that gives us a nice kind of roadmap for how we're going to approach it. We really we really try to leave our clients with, um, uh, you know, leaving them better than we found them. We, we aren't really trying to be, uh, like, locking them in to having us if many clients either they have no firmware team or they have a junior firmware team yeah. or they have a firmware team that gosh they'd really love to do xyz yeah. you know more modern process but they just don't know how to get there yeah. and so we can come in and be a catalyst for that i like i like that you say 
junior embedded yeah. or junior firmware team yeah. because I had the feeling that embedded development is something that's getting lost. Mm. And most of the embedded developers are like oldies, yeah. you know, bearded, gray-haired yeah, yeah. people. And and what well, bearded because mostly men, unfortunately. <laughs> it is, yeah. <laughs> but uh, no offense, sorry, but uh, that's, that's <laughs> yeah. the landscape these days. But I'm happy you're, you're mentioning that because that means that there is a young generation coming in still right. interested in coding for the lower layers. There are. And there's a lot of people. I feel like, you know, um, we're a partner with Arduino and, you know, yes. uh, Platforms like that have been a really nice kind of gateway drug into an embedded. You can make something work. You can get something going quickly. And then, but there is a gap, you know, between that and sometimes getting to production. And that's what I'd like to make sure is, you know, free and available for people to learn and grow and, and where we can come into a company and help them kind of bridge that. Perfect. Joe, awesome. thanks a lot. Hey, stay tuned. We're going to have our next guest just after this little tiny, not advertising, but some of it. Joe, thanks. All right. Yeah. Thanks. 